Hey there, colleague. How in the world are you doing? Do you want to know a lightning fast way for increasing your competence as a teacher? Me too. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I hope this video is not clickbait and that you're not clicking the thumbs down button. The point that I want to make in this video is that there isn't a shortcut to competence. And this matters to you and me because as I like to say, credibility, teacher credibility comes down to care, competence, and passion. How frequently do you demonstrate these things to your students? The degree to which they see those things typically predicts whether or not they think that you're a credible teacher. You're good at your job. You can take me to the next level. You care about me and the work that we're doing together. All right, that's credibility. So the thing is you can pretty quickly start to adjust the care levels in your classroom using something like moments of genuine connection. I'll link to that below. Or you can pretty quickly start to adjust the passion levels in your classroom. It just really comes from a little bit of internal work. All right, but competence is not, it's, it's, there's no quick fit. Cause here's the thing, competence is like a slow process. You gotta do this deliberate practice over time and this diligent pursuit of practice over time can make you good at teaching. So there's not a lightning fast way to become competent, but there is a way to become competent that most people don't use. You wanna know what it is? It's focusing. It's focusing your competence development efforts on areas of work that matter the most. That, that's it. That's how you can shortcut your way to greater competence faster. So like early on in your teaching career, you wanna do things like classroom management. And I know that's not like a great term and there's a lot of bad ways of thinking about classroom management, but I'm just talking about understanding group psychology, the psychology of a classroom, and knowing how to work with that so that you have an environment that people like to be in and where they actually can pursue mastery. So call it whatever you want. Sometimes I like to call it classroom stewardship, but like that's an area. Early in my career, I just, I just focused there and let everything else that I had to do sit over here and just be okay, but I was aggressively trying to improve at this. Then you expand out. I recommend student motivation, five key beliefs. Go big on that. Once you get that, now, now set that aside. That's like, okay, that's competent. Now work on argumentation in the classroom or knowledge building in the classroom or reading or writing or speaking or listening. So really those things that I just listed, those are what I would recommend focusing on. I mean, make sure that you understand your content, your discipline, but you're not teaching students to be like PhD level history students in a history class. You're, you're, you're teaching more fundamental stuff. I personally don't spend a million years like having an insane depth of knowledge in history because I find that I get more return on my effort investment if I focus on things like the five key beliefs beneath motivation, argumentation, knowledge building, reading, writing, speaking. And you know, I wrote a book about this called These Six Things, How to Focus Your Teaching on What Matters Most. You should maybe check that out. Link in the comments, okay? <sighs> Want to do me a solid? Like and subscribe. Take care and I'll see you next time.